Fueled by DeathCast. I've got a whole suite of science experiments, observations, or demonstrations, whatever you want to call them, and they have been uh, put on the, the web, the on NASA websites, and they're called Saturday Morning Science. Yes. Right. And then uh, APS, the uh, 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 American uh, Physical Society, hosted a number of my experiments uh, for my last flight, and they call it Physics Off the Sphere. Yeah. So if you, if you check uh, uh, either one of those places through your favorite search engine, you'll come to a number of these uh, educational scientific videos. And for example, I, I flew yo-yos and mm-hmm. the physics of a yo-yo involves, oh, there's what, yeah. <laughs> so the physics of a yo-yo involves alternating kinetic and potential energy, but you get an environment in a weightless environment, now there's no potential energy. And, yeah. and, and so you, it all has to be kinetic energy in the form of either angular momentum or linear momentum. And there's a lot of really cool physics behind something as whimsical as as doing a demonstration with yo-yos. And I'll put a couple um, clips from that video actually in this episode because not only did you were you on the space station inventing a zero-g coffee cup, you invented quite a, a lot of yo-yo tricks that can only be done in space as yeah, well. And, and, and so, so imagine a yo-yo trick where you throw the sleeper out and you let it crawl across the carpet or yeah, something. Yeah. That's called walking the dog. And it's one of my favorite tricks. Uh, but in weightlessness, you could throw a sleeper out and you could have it go across the ceiling. And so I call that the fly walk. <laughs> so cool. So here, spit a yo-yo. I'm going to do orbit the Earth. There we go. And it's orbiting slowly, but it's spinning fast. And then I'm going to do around the moon. Look at that. And then I'm going to do the tether assist. Now, normally we'd call that man on the trapeze, but it won't catch. And so it just bounces off the string. And, and it's kind of like the tether technology we use for satellites and things. So I call that the tether assist. And let's see if I can get it to come back now. Ah, there we go. And because I'm in space and I can, I get to name these yo-yo tricks as I invent them. So I call this shoot the planets. And I'm spending more time training to fly the robotic arm so I can snag this little spacecraft coming up here in a week or so called Dragon. And I haven't been spending as much time as I should working on my yo-yo training. So I've been ignoring my yo-yo training. So it, it may take a couple of times to get this trick correct. And it just shows that I've got misplaced priorities. There we go. So far, so good. Orbit the Earth. And now, so I'm keeping it moving in an arc. There's two. There's three. Oh, ho, how about that? Let's see if I can get it to come back. Oh, come on. Okay, so now it's spinning really fast. We're going around. Oh, I like this. I'm going to do shoot the, shoot the planets again. So there's that, there's that, and there's that. There. That was a good one. So cool. We love, on this show, we do a science segment every single week. We love science. We, we actually talk about what NASA is doing and what different things from space exploration is happening almost every single week. Um, and I love that you were doing like these Saturday morning science segments up on the space station too, which is so great. Um, did you, outside of the stuff that you invented, was there any um, experiment that you were really jazzed about working on either, either when you were there in Expedition 6 or, or 30 and 31? Was there one that you really loved? Yeah, there, there's, you know, most of the experiments on Space Station are programmatic in nature. They're well planned. They're well thought out. Uh, they're vetted through peer review on the ground, and they result in scientific peer-reviewed publications. And there's a whole suite of, of topics from fluid physics to crystallization to uh, uh, life sciences, 
to human physiological experiments. And probably the human physiological experiments are the most uh, uh, useful in terms of helping people on Earth because we're humans and to learn about human physiology in an environment where human beings were not innately meant to go, uh, you can learn things about your body. And and an example uh, is the bone decalcification. And we, we have an empirical solution for that now, which is exercising really hard, and that'll keep your bone uh, your bones healthy. And this is akin to sailors going on oceanic expeditions in the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries and, and, and succumbing to scurvy. Yeah. Yeah. It's like... You know, scurvy was this mysterious disease, which nowadays the the solution for scurvy is trivial. It's vitamins, but nobody had even uh, discovered vitamins. The word vitamin didn't even get coined until around 1915. Wow! And so people were dying from these mysterious diseases when sailors would go off on these ocean voyages, and they learned an empirical solution. Uh, a guy by the name of James Lind, a, a British uh, a naval surgeon, figured out if you suck on citrus, you won't get scurvy. Yeah. And thereafter, scurvy was no longer an issue for sailors, or it shouldn't have been. But they didn't understand vitamins and diet for about another hundred years. And so we're reliving this on station right now with bone density. You go into space, your bones start to decalcify. That's not good if you want to come back to Earth. And so we exercise really, really hard, and now your bones don't decalcify. So that's the equivalent of sucking on citrus. Hmm. But uh, we're still doing the fundamental research to figure out why biochemically your bones decalcify and how can we keep that from happening. And once we understand the basic uh, biochemistry of that, that's going to help everybody on the planet that doesn't have an opportunity to go into space. So it's the same story, different venue in terms of, of discovery and human physiology in, in uh, using environments where we weren't innately meant to be. And, and we learn these things literally from the souls of those explorers that go there. 